Tonight on The Story, the 118th Congress of the United States has been eventful. From supporting Ukraine against the Russian invasion to a late deal to raise the debt ceiling and avoid a costly default. The priorities for those in D.C. seem to never end. But how are Oregon's elected officials standing up for us some 2,500 miles away on the other side of the country? U.S. Senator Ron Wyden joins us live in studio. Here's the story. I'm Pat Doris. Welcome to the story. You know, we like to think, mix things up on this show. So tonight we are doing something very different. I'm here live with Oregon senior Senator Ron Wyden to talk about topics that you care about. Senator Wyden, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, delighted that you could make it. Before we get going, though, I've got my questions, but I want you in the audience to tell us what you want us to ask the senator. If you have an urgent question, email it to us right now and we'll try hard to get it in. The email is thestory at kgw.com. All right, let's begin with wildfires. We've spent the last two nights showing viewers how both uh, Pacific Power and PGE are getting ready with their meteorology departments for the fire season and possibly shutting off power. What are you doing on the national level to help us? I'm focused really on a couple of things. Uh, these are not your grandfather's fires. No, they're very They are bad. bigger, they're hotter, they're more powerful. Yeah. Senator Mike Crapo and I have written a law to encourage prevention, and it's already saved, according to the government, about $2 billion. What we did is we said we'll fight the big fires from the disaster fund and not keep raiding the prevention money. So I'm going to keep building on that with additional efforts to Just, thin okay. out the forest. And prevention money and disaster money, nobody knows what that means. Yeah, prevention is, it, is going in there and thinning out okay. these overstocked forests. And the Crapo Wyden Law, as I said, has saved $2 billion. We've got to do more of that. But the second part of what I'm focused on is getting fire uh, salaries up. Those people that are working in the woods, we got a boost for them after the pandemic. But now I just finished seven town hall meetings in rural Oregon. I see help wanted signs. They're paying more than the fire guys get. Interesting. All right. And the advantage of taking from one fund and not the other is the disaster funds. They were running out of money, weren't they, every year? No. Or was it the prevention? Fund? It was the prevention money because what would happen is they didn't calculate the budgets right. So they didn't really figure out what they'd need to put fires out. Then they came along and raided the prevention money. And Senator Crapo and I said, that's goofy even by Washington, D.C. standards. Let's keep the prevention money intact. Let's strengthen it by doing more thinning and doing more preventive work and fight the big fires with the disaster money. The government said we're saving $2 billion this way. Wow. Okay, well, that's encouraging. Let's turn now to the merger between Live Golf and the PGA. Seems basically like Live has bought the PGA. You said that it poses risks to America's national interest, particularly with respect to foreign investment in U.S. real estate, such as locations neighboring military facilities or sensitive manufacturing places. So are you saying that the Saudis could use golf courses to spy on military bases? Let, let me make it even more blunt. I think that the Saudis have showed utter contempt for U.S. law. And we know a little bit about this right here at home because we live in southeast Portland, not far from our house, a Saudi national ran over a youngster. And then right before that Saudi national was going to go to trial, Portland police collected evidence indicating that the Saudis came in and uh, cut the ankle bracelets and the like. Right, that was the Fallon Smart case. That was All the, right, we're going to get to that. But my question is, do you think that there's going to be spies using golf courses next to military bases to spy? There's certainly some national security issues there, and I'm on the Intelligence Committee. Right, so what tell I'm, us what you know. Well, what I'm more concerned about is that, you know, the Saudis are going to try to lubricate all these deals with the PGA, and in effect, uh, we'll be seeing our tax laws, I'm the chairman of the Senate Finance Committee, used for an advantage for the Saudis and not uh, to help us. So there are national security questions, there are big time economic uh, questions, and the fact is that you know the Saudis will pound us at the gas pump every chance that they get, and now they're gonna use the tax laws to try to lubricate the deals that help them. 
You've also accused them of trying to sports wash by buying essentially the PGA. But that Saudi fund also owns European soccer teams. It owns uh, 5% in electronic arts, also in Activision. It owns part of the concert promoter um, Live Nation. It has stakes in the cruise operator Carnival Corp. Uh, also Zoom and Uber, so are all of these companies helping to sports watch? It, it, it depends on a country's you know, history. I mean, this is a country, Saudi Arabia, that in effect killed Jamal Khashoggi, turned a blind eye to Fallon Smart, using the tax laws to lubricate uh, deals that help executives rather than our country. And so each instance has got to be evaluated individually. Okay, and on the Fallon Smart, she was killed in August of 2016. She was a sophomore uh, at Franklin High School. He was a senior at Portland Community College, swerved around some cars that had stopped for her in the crosswalk. And you're right, he was charged with manslaughter, and before he could be prosecuted, his country whisked him out of here. So just last week, the State Department formally passed, I believe, the Fallon Smart uh, program. Pat, this was something that I pushed for yeah. ever since her death. And nothing is going to bring Fallon Smart back. But this at least sends a strong message that our country isn't going to uh, turn a blind eye towards these kinds of things that, in, in my view, that's why I said the Saudis have a track record that shows utter disregard for U.S. law. Okay, but what does this new program do? It denies visas to people that might be connected with that? No, if there is evidence that people have taken reasonable, beyond reasonable steps to help an individual who's charged, they could be uh, sanctioned under this uh, new uh, policy. Okay, and sanctions means maybe their bank account's frozen or they're not allowed in? They're the not US. allowed in. Okay, and yeah. that's a big deal to them. Certainly sends a strong message to a lot of those Saudis with deep pockets if they've been involved in helping this. Yeah, okay. I know you've just returned from Eastern Oregon where you've been doing town hall meetings. One of the big headlines out there is it sounds like they're finally going to get some fast internet. They are, and it's something I'm very proud of. I work with the Secretary of Commerce, Gina Raimondo, talked to her three times at length about the fact that we have been underserved for broadband because of the way the federal government calculates our housing patterns. Our houses, particularly in rural areas, are further apart than the government's calculations. I got the evidence to them. We now got the biggest contribution in Oregon history for broadband. And here's why this is so important. I got more questions during my seven rural town meetings about broadband than anything else because broadband is to rural life what water is to farmers. Without it, they can't survive. Yeah. All right, speaking of water, there's a big problem with the water in Murrow, or Morrow and Umatilla counties. People who get their water from the wells there, mainly low-income Spanish speakers, for 30 years they've had a problem with their wells being contaminated. What can you do to help with that? Well, at my town hall meeting there, we looked particularly at the question of the water patterns, looking at the risk, some of the uh, potential liabilities. There's a company in, involved. We're trying to mobilize the government agencies. We've EPA. contacted yeah, mm -hmm. EPA, the state agencies, and we're all in on this. I mean, the idea that you can have clean drinking water in a uh, country as rich and good as ours is unacceptable. So we're mobilizing the resources at the federal, state, and private level. Okay, excellent. Let's go to a viewer question that we do have in. Uh, a viewer wants to know, would Senator Wyden support term limits for members of Congress? And yes, if yes, how does that process start? Well, the founding fathers already debated term limits, and they decided that term limits were an election. So. I think they made a lot of good calls, particularly on things like the First Amendment, which in many respects is more important than government. I don't think Western civilization is going to end if there are term limits. But the people who really win, Pat, are the bureaucrats, because the bureaucrats stay and stay and stay, and they take advantage of those who are inexperienced. So is that yes, you support term limits, or well, no, you don't? Well, it depends on how you write it, but I don't think the world will end if you have them. But I want Oregonians to know 
that I think the big winners in a lot of these term limit proposals that have been offered so far are the bureaucracy. Sure. The bureaucracy will be ecstatic because they'll be able to take advantage of people who don't have expertise. Okay, excellent, thank you. One other question from a viewer uh, from Sam. What can Congress do to ensure higher education is more affordable for o Oregonians in the first place? The prices just keep for, going. For, first thing we ought to do is lower the interest rates, and that's something that I'm talking about in terms of the loans. But I also think we ought to introduce do some competitive forces in the way education is financed. And I've had a bipartisan proposal called No Before You Go. Education is the biggest expenditure we make with absolutely no competitive forces. And I think people could get more value for their education dollar with the kind of proposal I just made. Mm, sounds good. All right, Senator Ron Wyden, thank you for being here. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us about these topics. Let's do it again. Okay, I look forward to that.